everyone and welcome! This is Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to learn about Angular 2 Child Routes as part of our router course. So let's get started! Child Routes allow us to navigate deeper into our application. The key thing to realize about Child Routes is that only one Child Route can be active at a time. And this might sound familiar to you. Take a look at these three top-level routes, so home, courses and lessons. Also these three routes are only active one at a time. So we could also see our application as having one main entry route, let's say the empty path route, and that empty route has three child routes, each can only be active once at a time, so this would be an alternative way of configuring our application. Let's try this new configuration. So as you can see, the application still works exactly as before. Let's now give a more common example of the use of a child route. Let's say for example the route courses. Typically we would want a child route of it to show the details of a given course. So in the URL we would type slash courses slash one or two. So we would type the ID of the course, something that uniquely identifies the course. Let's configure this. We can actually configure something similar to this scenario even without using shell routes. So let's for example configure a route course. Notice that it's course and not courses. Course slash colon ID and then we map it to course detail, to the course detail component. Let's try this out. If we now type slash course slash and then a number, let's say that's the ID of a course we can see that the course detail component is being displayed to the user. Another way of doing this configuration is via the use of child routes. So under the path courses, we typically have the root path where we have the list of courses and then we have a child route with the detail of each course. Well, we only want either the summary route or the detail route to be active at each time and never both. So this is the ideal scenario for using a shell route. For this, let's make courses a componentless route. This means that the route is there for routing matching purposes, but the route itself does not instantiate a component. Now we are going to configure two shell routes for the courses route. The empty path route, which corresponds to the courses component, the component that shows the list of courses, and the path with the ID of the course. This corresponds to the course detail. Again, only one of these two will be active at a given time. Let's try this out. If we reload the application and go to the path courses, we still have the courses list being loaded as expected. And now if we type manually in the URL courses slash and then we give it an ID, we are going to be forwarded to the course detail route, like we expected. You might have noticed that this file is starting to contain a lot of routing configuration. So it's a best practice to split the routing configuration across multiple files. So let's create a new routing configuration file courses router config and we are going to copy it in the definition of all the routes that relate to courses. We are then going to import it in the main configuration file and we are going to include it by using the array spread operator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can always subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Angular 2 tutorials. Also, have a look at the website of the Angular University to see what type of Angular 2 tutorials you find there that you might like. We are getting deeper into routing and this is only the beginning. So be sure to watch the following lessons for learning what is an auxiliary route and we are going to do exercise at the end of the course where we are going to build a complete dashboard. So stay tuned for the upcoming lessons.